Hi everyone, this is Mervic Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through an exercise deducing the shapes of molecules using VS EPR or the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. All right, let's take a look at this question. Which of the following reactions results in an increase in the bond angle of the underlying substances? So we have four options here and all the species are being mentioned as underlying. So what we will have to do, of course, is to make use of VS EPR theory or the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory to deduce the shape of the molecule or the species involved. And from there, we deduce the bond angle from the reactant to the product species. We want to deduce if there's an increase in the bond angle, which is what is being requested in the question, or if there's a decrease in the bond angle. So Essentially, this question, it is not difficult, but for an MCQ question, it is very tedious if you are not familiar with deducing the shapes of molecules. So if we are not comfortable or if we are not familiar with deducing the shapes of molecules and determining the bond angle, then each species might take about one or two minutes for us to deduce. Then you notice in this exercise, we will have to consider a total of eight species. So if you're not familiar with this concept, then this question can easily take you more than 10 minutes. And of course, we know that for MCQ questions, we don't have the luxury of spending 10 minutes per question. On average, each question should only take us about two minutes. And this question, it is not a challenging question. It is actually a very standard question, but it is a little bit tedious. So what this means is we will have to be very familiar with certain ideas in A-level chemistry. So in this case, we have to be familiar with VSEPR, drawing dot and cross diagram, deducing the shapes of molecules and the bond angle. So therefore, when we encounter questions like this, we can do the comparison quite quickly and answer this as fast as possible. So I actually have a previous video involving deducing the shapes of molecules and drawing dot and cross diagram. So if you're not familiar with these concepts, then it is recommended that you refer to these videos to at least have some basis or have some foundation in terms of how do we draw dot and cross diagram and then how do we deduce the shapes of molecules depending on the total number of electron pair and the number of lone pair and bond pair around the central atom. So this exercise actually assumes that we have some basis involving the deduction. Maybe we're not very familiar with it, but let's keep this in mind. Eventually, when we see for test or exam, we have to be very familiar with this idea. But essentially, running through each of these species, the idea it is pretty standard. Now, if I consider carbon dioxide as the reactant, now CO2 actually it is a standard molecule. So in principle, we should be able to recall the shape of CO2 straight away. CO2 should be two bond pair, no lone pair. Shape with respect to carbon will be linear. The bond angle will be 180 degrees. Now for carbonate, CO3 two minus, CO3 two minus the Lewis structure, it is given. Now, again, as mentioned, if you're not familiar with deducing the Lewis structure of a particular species, then we will have to be comfortable with drawing the dot and cross diagram for carbonate. And if you're not familiar with it, I have a previous video involving that. So it is a good idea to look through that video first. So in this case, we just assume that you are comfortable with deducing the Lewis structure for the species. So carbonate, the carbon will have a double bond oxygen, two single bond with a O minus. So if I consider the shape with respect to carbon, this will be a three bond pair, no lone pair. The shape will be trigonal planar, bond angle, will be 120 degree. So in this case, from the reactant to the product, there is a decrease in the bond angle. So this is not what we want. The question wants the instance where there is an increase in the bond angle. Now next, if I consider B, B is BH3 to BH4 minus. Now for BH3, again, this should be a standard molecule because this is an example of three bond pair, no lone pair. Another very good example would be aluminum chloride, AlCl3. So BH3 will look something like this. Shape with respect to boron will again be trigonal planar, three bond pair, no lone pair. Bond angle will be 120 degrees. Now, if I consider BH4 minus, now BH4 minus actually, what we can do is we can link this from BH3 so that we don't need to 
draw the Lewis structure or deduce the shape with respect to boron from scratch. So since BH3 it is trigonal planar, three bond pair and no lone pair, if I consider BH4 minus, it is effectively adding a H minus, a hydride. So a H minus will use two electrons to be bonded to my boron. So what we will have is we will have something like this. So this H minus comes from the hydride. Then now we have this BH4 minus, the shape with respect to boron will be tetrahedral, four bond pair, no lone pair, bond angle with respect to boron will be 109.5 degree. Again, if I compare these two, 120 to 109.5, there is a decrease in the bond angle. So therefore, again, B, it is not the answer that we want. Now next, how about C? Now C, NH2 minus 2, NH3. My suggestion is we focus on the species that we are familiar with first. So there are certain common molecules and species that along the way we might encounter quite often. So it is a good idea to instinctively know the shape and the bond angle with respect to them. For example, CO2 that we have just mentioned, BH3 that we have also covered, ammonia, things like water, methane. So all these are very common species that we will encounter. Good idea for us to remember the shape and the bond angle of hand. Then some of the other molecules we try to deduce based on the common molecules that we remember. So by right ammonia, we should instinctively know that this guy, it is a three bond pair, one lone pair. So shape with respect to nitrogen will be trigonal pyramidal. And the basic shape, it is tetrahedral bond angle should be close to 109.5. And according to VSEPR, we know that the lone pair repulsion, it is bigger than bond pair repulsion. So the presence of this lone pair will push the rest of the bonds closer together. I will expect the bond angle for ammonia will be smaller than that for a species, which is tetrahedral. So tetrahedral bond angle it is 109.5. If in this case I have one lone pair, the guideline is every lone pair we minus off 2 degree. So about 109 minus 2 degree, this bond angle will be 107 degree. So the bond angle for a species which is trigonal pyramidal, typically we will just use 107 degree. Now for NH2 minus, now for NH2 minus, we try to deduce this based on NH3. Effectively, what we do is we just take out a H plus. It is as if ammonia it is acting as a proton donor. It donates a H plus, it loses this H plus, and these two electrons is still with nitrogen. Then we will end up with NH2 minus. So we just use ways to try to imagine how do I convert ammonia to NH2 minus. Then it makes it easier for us to deduce what is the total number of lone pair and bond pair around nitrogen. So if NH3 loses a H plus, it becomes NH2 minus. Then with respect to nitrogen, it will have two lone pair, two bond pair. Now remember nitrogen altogether, it has five electrons. One electron is here with hydrogen sharing. One is sharing its electron with hydrogen. Then you will have three more valence electrons. Two of these electrons is here. One electron is here. There's one more electron which actually comes from the negative charge. So this would be NH2 minus. Now for nitrogen, in this case, two lone pair, two bond pair, the shape will be bent. And again, the basic shape, it is tetrahedral. So the bond angle is close to 109.5. As mentioned for every lone pair, because of the lone pair repulsion being greater than the bond pair repulsion. So for every lone pair, we minus off two degree to roughly estimate the expected bond angle. So 109 minus two for one lone pair, minus another two for one lone pair, the bond angle, it is around 105 degree. So NH2 bond angle, it is 105. NH3 bond angle, it is 107. Then you notice we now have an increase in the bond angle. So this is the answer that we want. So for this exercise, the answer to this question will be option C. All right, for the sake of concept, of course, let's run through option D. Now, option D, we have XEF2 and XEF4. Now, if we find this unfamiliar, then by right, we will need to deduce the total number of electron pair around xenon. We will have to deduce the shape based on that. Now, if I consider xenon, which is a noble gas, so it will have a total of eight valence electrons, right? So eight valence electrons, if it forms a bond with fluorine, because fluorine need one electron to be octet. So what you do is you try to share an electron with xenon. Xenon will share one electron back. So the expected relationship between xenon and fluorine, 
the expected bond between xenon and fluorine will just be a normal single covalent bond. Xenon share one electron, fluorine share one electron, so therefore fluorine will be octet. So the expected number of bonds we will have for XEF2 is, I will have two XEF bonds, then xenon will use a total of two electrons, but you will have six more electrons. So this will mean that xenon will still have three lone pair. So I know that xenon in this case will have two bond pair and three lone pair. So from this, we can deduce the shape with respect to xenon. Now, two bond pair, three lone pair, the total number of electron pair, it is five electron pair. Basic shape should be trigonal by pyramidal. And if I have three lone pairs, all the lone pairs will go into the triangular plane. So my XEF2 will look something like this. The fluorine will be in the XL position. The lone pairs will be all in the equatorial position. And the bond angle in this case with respect to xenon will be 180 because we can see that the shape for this molecule in this case will be linear. Now how about XEF4? Now XEF4, we know that each of the xenon fluorine bond will be a normal covalent bond. So I'll have a total of four XEF bonds, which will use up four electrons for xenon. Now xenon still will have four electrons left, which is not involved in any bonding. So four electron means that you have two lone pairs. So what this means is for XEF4, I'll have a total of four bond pair and two lone pair. Basic shape, it is octahedral, six electron pair. If it is six electron pair, and if I consider four bond pair, two lone pair, the two lone pairs will be pointing directly opposite each other to minimize repulsion. The rest of the fluorine will be in this position here. So shape in this case will be a square planar. The square planar, the bond angle with respect to xenon will be 90 degrees. So if I consider this scenario, there is a decrease in the bond angle from 180 degrees to 90 degrees. So therefore the bond angle decreases. And of course, D is also not the answer. All right, so that was the discussion involving deducing the shapes of molecules using VSEPR and subsequently comparing bond angles. Again, you notice this question is more tedious than difficult. So it requires us to be very familiar with the concept of VSEPR and deducing the shapes of molecules and the bond angles. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.